Well, what a warm welcome onto the show for the first time in 2023. We hope it's certainly not the last time. Champion Crusaders coach Scott Robertson joins us. G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, man. How are you so, doing? I'm very good, thank you. So I've got many, many questions to ask, and obviously some of them I'm going to ask, <laughs> which you probably don't want to answer, but I mean, I have to do my job and ask those. But first and foremost, though, so we're a week away, mate, and obviously you're in fine-tuning mode from here, right? Yeah, yeah, this time of a year, you know, when you sort of use 50-odd players in pre-season and you get another guys coming in to cover with the All Blacks and um, different guys' opportunity to train really well, you, you sort of get through your pre-season, hopefully, yeah. I'm healthy and happy and, and you can put the best team out um, and then just get some cohesion and time together and get the, right, the mindset right for a, for a massive match against the Chiefs. Yeah, so how do you look at pre-season? Because, you know, we're kind of sitting here, you know, turning and throwing about the Warriors pre-season. And, I mean, you always I get too excited when we win a game and then we lost in against the Storm yesterday. So, <laughs> so how do you rate pre-season? What are you actually looking for? Um... Giving guys opportunities just to see what they're like under pressure, and you know, you know, you're trying to add into your game and evolve it every year. So you look at those. So opportunities for players evolving your game, cover combinations, and just got guys getting shoulders on, just timing. You know, the physicality, and um, a lot of the guys have built their body for for a tough season, or, or um, you know, um, have come back from injuries, and you just want guys just to get their rhythm and and, and timing right. So, in terms of that, in terms of the injuries and things, uh, what is your philosophy? I mean, how much of a worry is it? Do you do you let them go hell for leather in these in these trial games and then pull them off after a few? Oh, God, one, and get them off the field after a few minutes? Or how? Or how? How do you? How, do, how What's your actual thought process behind it? Do you think it's better that they keep playing for forty minutes? I mean, what is it? Yeah, good one. The, the, probably half time. Forty minutes is enough for these guys, especially the more experienced. Um, end of it, like the guys that have been around for a while, they need less. Sometimes young guys need a little bit more, um, just with their timing, with their bodies, game understanding. Uh, end up pretty naturally fit, but nothing like a game. Absolutely nothing like a guy. Guys flying in all different directions. You're, you're sprinting back and forward. You know, you're running for three minutes at a time, uh, and you're got a ball in your hands and making decisions. You just can't replicate it. No. So you need enough of that. So when they get to round one, they've um, they've felt it and, you know, they're ready. You, you've got to give them stuff enough to get ready, but also not blow them out too early. Scott know? Robertson is with us. How do you know that a player is ready? Say it's a new player. Say it's a newbie and you've been watching them for a while and you've actually got them to the stage. How, when you look at them, how do you know and you think, that guy's ready now? Um, you've got to trust your eye. You, you've got to trust your eye, and it just your eye sort of goes into your instinct and go, okay, he's physically ready um, be, with his preparation off the field, everything he's done, and then his ability to just get up to the speed of the game. You know, like they're, they're, they're not too far behind the game, they've got a little bit of an impact from it, they're not losing contacts, and, and then all you see, oh, uh, you know, some of them just might slink away. They might they stop talking. They just slink into the background. They um, they just don't quite do their job as well as they should. And you think, ah, oh, they just need a little bit more time. So there's a little bit of art and science to it. Um, but you, you just you just get used to it over a period of time watching a lot of footy and a, a lot of a lot of guys and yeah, it's experience. Yeah, because you get to understand, don't you, with the experience that you get doing this, you get to understand all kinds of nuances. And you're looking, that's why I asked you that question, because you're looking at different things than the rest of us look at, because that's your job. Yeah, yeah. Especially, look, I, I, because I did New Zealand 20s for so long and I was in that with that age group and got to understand how the, you know, the old frontal lobe develops for the young fellas and their decision making on and off the field, how it works and how, you know, the. The ability to go, okay, actually, he, he, he's good to go. You can see him physically, but one time, sometimes not mentally. Um, and sometimes you just throw it out there and they surprise you. You're like, oh, how he's on. You know, he's he, he, he plays way better than he trains. There's a lot of those guys. The guys just walk, running around, stand on people's toes and, <laughs> you know, they, their line-out work's not great, Or but then you get them on the field and they just, you know, they just cut people in half and they're, they're tough. So it's the balance of it. Do you have to? Do you do any big rousing speeches about the buy-in into the Crusaders' culture or anything like that? Do you ever need to do that now, or is that just something that when a player joins your group that they know that already? 
Because I, I know that they just don't join out of nowhere, that they've normally come through some kind of grades where you've had them for a while. Yeah, look, we have a lot of our guys that come in to, to play for the Crusades through the academy, so they're, they're used to the, the structure, you know, the, how we behave, our standards, how we run our meetings, how, you know, how the daily, the daily grind, you know, because they understand what's required from them, but probably more importantly is how you induct them at the start of the academy or induct them when they first come in the first year, them, their family, what's required, pairing them with somebody else, who, who they can um, work with, any different questions that they need. Take away as much anxiety, you know, as much stress as you can by giving them um, certainty, giving them a clear someone they can mould model off. So, you know, a partner, you know, like a young yeah. um, Zach Geller has, you know, he was partnered with Sam Whitelock, for example. And then, then they, okay, this is how it's done. This is your locker. All these little simple things. You know what it's like first day at the job. Oh, yeah, mate. You're walking around you the state on your hand looking for the photocopier all day. You've got no idea, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, mate. I don't even know where the photocopier is. But <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the, 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 and that's it. You've just got to set them up so they, they win the first days and they feel good about themselves. Um, and then, then all of a sudden, then, then the pressure comes on anyway at training because they're because they're great athletes and good rugby players. But take everything away from that they need, and then we we do a lot of induction videos around our our past players. We get to, to talk about what's to be a crusader and what the standards and values that we have previously, and they say tell stories. So we get a lot of our old guys to tell the story to to help them understand what we're about. Do, do people ever disappoint you in these situations, or if somebody? doesn't quite fit the mould or they go off the rails or something like that, do you feel more disappointed in yourself that you didn't get through to them? Has that ever happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, it has. Um, Sorry, not, it might be an unusual often. question. Sorry. Yeah, it's a good one. You caught me here. But I, 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 what I want to say is, like, I pride myself on looking at really good, like, at early warning signs. But to just, I'm good at, I believe it. And, you know, observing and noticing people, things are different, they're acting different, they might not be off, you know, they've got sleep in their eye, they, they, they haven't had a shower in the morning, you know, I expect the guys to come and shower, they're not yawning, they're, you know, they're, they're off their phones, your relationship with their phones and alcohol strong, I talk about it all the time, I do a lot of work with them, making sure they're ready for the morning, you know, just to get to work, to come in and if they're not or something on at home or I'll check in with someone that they know, and, you know, close in the group and the team and start to ask about them. Do I have to have a chat? I've got great relationship with the agents around the country. So I'll do my homework and then and normally I can get early enough so we can get like an intervention or, or something happens so that we can help them out um, or, 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 or or get a good group, you know, someone around them, our PDM Strong Virginia um, Labar, who, who, who does a lot of work with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we just package. We make sure we get a package around them. But yeah, I've had it. I've missed those signs, and things that happen. I thought, wish I could have done you know, done that better. How do you motivate the motivator, mate? Because out of out of everyone that you've got in your group, how, so who 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 motivates you, and how much time do you actually spend, you know, thinking about that kind of stuff? How do I reinvent myself? How do I keep the message from getting stale? All of that. Um, well, well, this might sound quite. Um, book like, but I don't motivate people, I inspire people to be motivated. That's one thing that I know. And how do you inspire a group that's won and done it over and over? And Yeah. Like yeah. I, you know, it, that, that's the challenge because, you know, like if someone said it's just another game, I'd be gutted under my reign or my coaching and someone said, oh, it's just another game. Rugby. No, no, no. This game is the most important. This is why it's going to be historic. It's in... It's going to be written down. It's going to be in black and white somewhere about the result and the results are a fiction of what the week we've had. So how do I get the week right? You know, how do, how do we prepare so, we, the, you know, we have fun every day, they enjoy coming in, but they know the importance of it. So how do I inspire them? You know, I, I don't, people know that I do a lot of theming and I'm a storyteller by nature. So I'll tell you a story that suits that week. Um, and, you, you know, people get bored pretty easily. Yeah, <laughs> and of course. You know, you get... And, and how do I you get make those you know those habits that you've got every day every day do every day make them attractive? So that's that's what I love doing. That's what I enjoy inspiring people. Yeah. Scott Robertson is with us. You also love having the target on your back, don't you? I know that that is a motivator. Come yeah. and get some. You want some? Come and get some. Take it off us. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, look, we've got some awesome rivals, you know. The Chiefs are a hell of a side, and Blues, what a run last year, and, you know, there's so much power in hur- Hurricanes. So I can go through, through everyone, like, everyone's different. It's, you, you, the first thing I know, you've got to evolve. So if you, if you, you've got a target on your back, yep, but you've got to evolve to the target moves. That's one thing we know. Otherwise, we're going to get caught. And But how do you do that? Because if you start changing things and it takes, you know, you've got a lag, you know, you've got to add to your game, that's the art and the skill of it. So how much do we, how much do we evolve? Um, what part of the week? Because people like, you know, consistency. Yep. Um, and, and people like, you know, the, the known, but they also want to be challenged and growing. So we, we, we talk about getting better or getting beaten. So what's our get better? For example, and we spend a lot of time on and, and a little bit around that mindset. Have we got better around here? How do you grade that? Is it a gold standard or not? Um, so, yeah, we come up with different ways to, to monitor that. <clears throat> I tell you what, we've been speaking for 10 minutes, 58 seconds now. I haven't asked a single question about it, and I'm going to leave it to the end of the <laughs> interview because, no, mate, I've just got too much respect. I know that, you know, a couple of weeks ago you made yeah. comments. Every time you, you utter anything about anything to do with that All Blacks thing, it's going to make national headlines, it's going to make international headlines. And so, you know, I could be a smart ass here and I could, I, could pep, I could pepper questions or something, but I'm not going to. I've got a couple more things I want to ask. Obviously, I'm going to ask a couple of things about that. Just in terms of, just tactically though, in terms of you studying the opponent, like this coming week, how much time do you actually spend or how much time does your staff spend analysing those opponents and tactically preparing for that game? Yeah, look, I've got Scott Henson with me who's an absolute little general. He, he loves it. He's a tireless worker. Reminds me a lot of Wayne Smith and... You know, he coached with Wayne Smith at Kobe too, and uh, coached when, when, when he was a, a crusader and back in the day. Um, so he's got a lot of um, respect for Smithy in the way he he breaks the game down. So he does a lot of it. Um, he knows the Chiefs' DNA. He knows us what we're like as well. He'll, he'll spend a lot of time and, and just giving us clarity what's required to, to, to win that match. And then the ability to deliver that as clearly as we can possibly can to the group. We know that, you know, to use a chess as an example, um, their style of play, when they're at the best, you know, what feeds them, and then and then what, what's required for us. Just like every team would do. Um, and then everyone in their own little areas, you know, um, will go around the scrum and the line out. You know, Tommy Ellison does a lot of work with, obviously, a defensive coach and, and where their strengths are and, and, and how do we. You know, counter those, mate. <laughs> when you got Dean Mac in the opposition, you've got to be on. Mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> put it simply. Yeah, yeah. Any um, any word on whether you're going to go surfing in Fiji? <laughs> 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 mate, how good's cloud break? Oh, look. Um, I love that comment though when know, he said we're offering you a surf break. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a pay packet attached or just a surf break? Yeah, oh, I'll take the surf break. Whatever. Well, we went straight to the heart, mate. You didn't go to the back pocket. That's went it. Straight to the heart. Yeah. Um, oh, look. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see. There's a few things to work through um, on on that front. <laughs> As you said before, mate, it's hard for me. I, I'm very mindful of what I say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you actually, can yeah. I ask you, did you get in, in any trouble last time? Because, I mean, people have always, look, my job is, and the, <laughs> and, the, and the people around me, we're, we're paid to ask these questions, and obviously people want to hear the answers to it. You you honest an answer, and then all of a sudden, oh, hell no, you're not allowed to say that. Look, it's also a sensitive subject. May I also say, mate, and I know you yeah. feel about this as well, you know, I feel for Ian Foster, while we're talking about his job that he's actually got, that's, you know, I feel, I don't feel comfortable about that. I feel kind of a bit disrespectful about it. You know, I don't know how you feel about it, but I kind of think he deserves a bit more. He's the all-black coach to the World Cup. Um, yeah, how do, I, how do I put this professionally? Um, look, the decisions and announcements and, you know, that's for somebody else. I, I'll just wait for the process. And the Angela will will deal with the rest. That's pretty much all I can give you. Sorry, and, and I was on the naughty step here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, you know, yeah. I tell you what, yeah. whatever happens, you know, and I love every player like this. I loved Jerry Collins, RIP. I loved Ali Williams as well, yourself, mate. Put him in the box, he's going to jump out. Keep Put him in the box, he's going to jump out. Yeah. Guess what? Change the shape of the box, you, you dickhead. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
But I understand, you know, yeah. it's it's a topic that, you know, everyone wants to ask about and in your own good time. In the meantime, we've got Super Rugby to look forward to and I can't wait this weekend. I've spent, you know, taken up 15 minutes of it. I know you're a busy man. We appreciate it, Scott. Thank you, mate. Yeah, good. Thanks for um, being mindful. Cheers, mate. Always. Thanks, good on you. It's Scott Robertson with his Crusaders coach.